Hello everybody, my name is Andan. Welcome to another Lego Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2 Part 1 Episode 9. The blah blah blah. It does not say the title. Uh hello again. My name is Ande. I said that twice now. Uh last episode we went through a lot. Uh Bonzo Bonzo could capture the bounty fell and uh d d um d uh yeah. So it's all it's all getting worse, and they're about to enact the ritual of Blood Moon, and everything seems to be literally super hopeless. Uh, from the way they're hyping it up, it gives me vibes of really just like, you know, uh, Sons of Garmadon when they're trying to enact their ritual of reviving Garmadon from the Departed Realm. Uh, I imagine, though, this one is a lot different because from the way they, they speak about it, it's not reviving from the death, it is reviving or. Unbanishing from a banished, like, dimension slash realm. Which appears to be different than the other realms, which were combined together and merged. Like, from what we saw, it seemed to be like a portal to another place. But here it seems to be, like, it doesn't seem to be connected to the realm. It seems to be, like, its own, essentially, pocket dimension. So, that's very interesting, and I can't wait to see what, what, what more we learn of this place. So, uh, once again, uh... If you guys want to watch uh, more of these, please let me know. I will be reacting to more of the show as it goes on. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be the last one of two last episodes. And uh, we won't get Ninjago for probably, I don't know, a long time. Later this year, maybe? That seems to be the order they go with. Uh, you know, it's very unfortunate. But, uh, you know, uh, stuff like this takes time. And it's, you know, it's fine to wait. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's good. I need to watch more. Uh, let me know if you want me to watch more stuff, though, when it comes out. Like, I'll love, like if they release some shorts in the future, I'll, for me to watch those. Or if they release a uh, trailer, I'll probably watch those. You know, spend an hour yapping again <laughs> about nothing to do with anything. It's just me talking about whatever, as always, has been with these episodes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, please go watch and support the show. Uh, watch it on Netflix, uh, YouTube channel, uh, slash lego.com, or not, not YouTube slash lego.com, whatever the Lego channel is, watch it on there, and if not, watch it on Netflix, and if not, watch it on, uh, uh, VPN, I guess, so, uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see where to go from here, let's go watch this episode, yee, oh, wrong email, yee, yeah, bam, Let's watch this episode in three, two, one, play. Whoa. What place is this? Oh! Little baby Roz. Is this a Chima? His ball fell. Oh no. Aw. Look at, look at the baby. Oh, help him! Somebody help him! Look at him! He's trying to get out of his hole. He dropped his ball in there. Oh, what on earth? Whoa! Huh? That was interesting. You, have the last of the Thalassian texts been translated? Yes. Good. Destroy this place and everything in it. Jeez. What about them? I said everything. Ooh. We no longer need the writers of destiny. We are the masters of our destiny. Well, uh, uh, actually, uh, if you said everything, you should have said everyone. Wait, so oh, they just, they just cut away from Cinder destroying them off screen? Off screen deaths? Or so back? Ninja for us, pride. We really are back. Forest of Spirits. Is you still with me? <laughs> you right, wouldn't hurt. Oh, does she have a fear of heights now? 
Oof. That's fair. Oh no! Nice. <laughs> yeah, just reel her back up. <laughs> You're gonna jinx it again. Nice. <laughs> yeah, rip the bounty. Uh oh. Oh, they move so cool though. Yeah, let's see them fight. The climber mech fight. This again. I mean, they're helpful, right? Jeez. Oh no! Whoa. Wait, is it... Nether space. No, I don't want to be just a spell again. Unless you have a choice, you can thank us. We're helping you to do what you were created to do. No, you're actually making her do the opposite of what she was created. Hey, it's a buggy. Careful, Benny. You don't want to fall and get a pop on your lucky. <laughs> Based. We gotta get out. We gotta get Bonzo back from that creep. Whoa. I understand your emotions, Cole, but we must remain calm and find a solution. Mm. Ooh. What? That is a mimic door. <laughs> oh. What? We'll have to go through the basement and smell it if we can catch a drag. Just behind this door. It smells like rotten manure covered in moldy culture. Ooh. <laughs> don't smell anything. Oh. No. Don't tell me it's been put with an infinity door curse. <laughs> sure, infinity door, but also gets Oh. Hey. <laughs> Sorceress, there's tons of magic jewelry here. Couldn't something abracadabra us out? Oh, yes. Good idea. Now, if only I could remember what all this stuttering is. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Looks like a road. Any idea which way we should go, Ryu? Good idea, Ryu. 
signs everywhere. Wish someone made a sign here that says, Evil Blood Moon Ritual up ahead. If anything, they'll show us how to get there and stop Vlad. Yeah. Oh, wow. The girl. No. Is that the girl from the trailer? The one who hates Sora? <laughs> she doesn't know her name. He, be, he do be moving fast. Yo! Let's go! That's awesome. Okay, I sense the tension here, but we don't have to fight if we just take the temperature down a notch. Taking the temperature down is never my place. I mean, that is fair. Whoa. Oh, just he just threw that guy off the cliff. That's a strong stick and strong leg. Wow, Monty's training really worked. You'd be so proud of me right now. Jeez. Whoa, that guy locked in. Almost. Oh, that that guy definitely died. Save her. Whoever she's got in there, we have to free them. Where does she get her buggy from? Huh? I thought it was you. Sorry, I can't remember your name. <laughs> hey, hey, you did your so much. Wow. Nice. Oh, the grappling hook. Uh oh. That's if she. That's what she wants. Nice. Jeez. Nice. Yo, it's his buggy now. Hmm. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh. Oh, I thought they were gonna break, but that is statistically the better solution. The mech. Or, what am I talking about? The grappling hook for the car. Nice. First time driving? Believe it or not? No. Come on, let me get you out of that box. We can't. It's magically sealed. Maybe my prediction, no time. Vlad needs me for his blood moon ritual. No me, no ritual. So we gotta get as far away from Rod and his people as we can. On it. Good thing they're in a car. <laughs> but don't worry. We'll be fine. Watch now. I want to blast something again. More of a 
this clown came for the blood moon. That's gotta be where the ritual's happening. Huh. That gives me an idea. Uh, don't put the masks on. I think we can pull this off. What? Maybe one of them uses a crutch? That is fair. Nice. A. What? Are you kidding me? Blood moon white? Pressing my leg actually healed it. Who knew? Wrong tooth? I was the first one to tell you that you should rest. Yeah, but when the dragon said it, it turned out to be true. <laughs> <laughs> what about a falcon? Huh, invisible shoe. <laughs> Did they make your feet invisible? Oh no. Sound like they can float. Oh. <laughs> So like gravity? <laughs> oh no, it was a teapot. Ooh. Is it flubber? Oh. Did anyone hear me? What happened to my voice? <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. Whoa. This is not a desirable outcome. <laughs> worry, it'll be fine. Huh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Should have labeled that. He's turned him into a dog. Well, you are adorable. I'm always adorable. <laughs> okay. Oof. Hey, I'm in here. What? <laughs> the good news is you have lots more of that stuff. Oof. Our lord left it on an order on Hicks, and the other is here tracking it. That's it. Oh. I cannot see. Where are we going? <laughs> Based. But the vertical distance between the keyhole and the ground is impossible for me to have. Is he big thing? Oh, he's big thing. <laughs> well, I appear to still have a problem. Really? You could have worn off by now. I mean, if they time it right. I guess we'll just have to buy by the bike, too. He's already worried, though. Oh, it's him. Uh, they probably shouldn't be near it when it, the dawn goes on. Like there's a lot more of them than I expected. Yeah, one. At least 124, or 142. Big scene back there, awesome. Uh oh. Oof. I could have used Big Zane. Whoa. The cloud came out. It appears to be losing altitude. That's probably where they took Bonzo. Losing altitude. 
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Named your hat Hattie. Jeez. You gotta you always need the drums. Whoa. After long centuries, Knocked. Are being called home. His voice sounds cool. Jeez. Whoa. Not the teacher's pet anymore, I guess. <laughs> what do you think all that was? A good distraction. Let's go. Oh, is he he's running after it? Jeez. He has power. And he just stopped it with a sweep of his hammer. No, Ryu, you get away. This is not gonna end well. Jeez. Not the foot again. Jeez. I stopped you as easily now as the first time we met. I was weak like you once. My master found me and taught me the most important thing in this world. Strength. Jeez. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> that went crazy. Huh? Jeez. Wow. <laughs> oh. There is so much that just happened. Ooh. Another great episode. <laughs> I want to watch the last one so bad now. <laughs>
Uh, but we can't. We can't. Unless, uh, unless I decide, hey, let me make this another two in one episode like I did for the first one way back when. When I made the merge part two and part one in one episode because they couldn't decide on, hey, let me click what? Let me click. Let me click it away. But now. Nah. Okay, so there's still lots of process here between all that's going on, especially with, uh, with, um, um, in between the, with what we see here. So, uh, actually though, should I do it? Should I go in, or should I do a two for one? Last day special? Hmm? I know, I know, I know I'm talking to no one here because both this is a recording and not live and you all probably are watching this right now being like, huh, why is he talking about this? this is obviously not what that is. But I think I think we'll just save it for next time. I think that's just how it has to be. So, uh, yeah, a lot happened this episode. Uh, first of all, we have this flashback, which it looks very like Chima reminiscent, right? This can be just me. Like, just the way the lighting looks, the forests. This looks very Chima-esque. Or at least somewhere in this wildness place. And then we finally get a Roz flashback. Some Roz lore. Nah. Lore between what his realm is, which is the wildness, and which is also uh, where Chima was part of. So Chima is basically just a floating continent or island, I would guess, that was on top of... <laughs> Oh, the wildness, sorry. <laughs> Top of the wildness that is now part of this realms. So, uh, so it's just there. Which is interesting. So, like, what would this place take? How, do we know how old exactly Roz is? Do we know if he's, like, Hundreds of years old. Do we know he's thousands of years old? Do we know if he's just... at? We know he's at least old enough, right? To be, uh... To, be, to have been there since the beginning of Imperium before it went to Beatrix. Yeah, and we don't know how old that is, though. We don't know. Like, at least older-ish than... Well, at least she's at least... We know he's at least older than Sora, who's like... With 15, 16 years. So that's already pretty old-ish, kind of. That's That tells us nothing, but... Okay, what I mean is... <clears throat> how old is he? Do we know how old this is? Do we know when this could take place in the timeline? Because we still have no idea how old uh, he even is. Because like, as far as we know, this lion tiger man could be... Much older than he seems, and he's just not telling us. So here we see little baby Ross. He dropped this ball in this ravine, and this is not something I expected. Look at just because, because just look at this. Just, la, la, just, <laughs> look at this little guy. He couldn't hurt anybody. He was just a little guy. Baby Ross. <laughs> Who hurt him? Who let his ball fall in this ravine? Look at that. Look at that. Poor guy. Let him have his ball. His ball. But yeah, how did that happen? How does he fall in there? Well, we see how he falls. He tries to get out, but... As he says it himself, he does not have, he didn't have the strength. So, really, that's an interesting way to put it. But then when he can't get out, he crouches down, he holds his ball, and apparently that's when his master decided to manifest, whoever his master is, who we still have no idea. We have no clue who he is, but he, he can apparently appear in... In any realm, I think. He can appear in someone's head, it seems. He can take them to a 
pretty much a void out of a void of something, which is interesting. Because, like, yeah, we still don't know what he is. Or even, we don't know who or what he is. But I believe it was, who's, it was it the Garmadon comic? The Lycan King, his name? Which, if I'm going to be 100% honest, that's a very cool name. It's something I would totally buy as being the name for this unseen ma master dragon man. Who, we have no idea what they even look like yet. Which, unless it's imprinted in this gong of shattering which makes him which makes more sense as to why all this is apparently for him his master and you know it's very interesting and these guys say these forbidden five that they speak of have a lot to <sighs> they have a lot to live up to based on who they are and what they can do uh I really want to, I really low-key want to make this into a two-parter. Or, a, 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 not a two-parter, but like a one-parter, essentially. So, hold on. When they say, Cinder tell Cinder to destroy everything. Literally, he goes out and gives him a look and says, uh, everything. So, like, so, like, is this canonly saying that he killed them? Like, just went out and took them all out here? They no longer read the writer's destiny, they are their own destiny. Which is, that is a crazy line. Especially when talking about to do with them. Because it's not like they're just going, oh, we need them. To, we're going to take them for prisoners because we're the bad guys. Ha -ha. No, literally get rid of them. And from what we see, that is probably the case. Given how they cut away. And we just get this view of them like whimpering while... Cinder looks back at them, which gives us some pretty horrific implications. If such as them cutting away and then just getting a field uh, sc sky view of them. And then he even says, like, later on, it says it, it's losing altitude. So, like, does that mean it's losing altitude because they died? Or nah? What does that mean? What does this mean with uh, all that's going on? But yeah, that's crazy. We at least see that Hellfire has a sort of fear of heights, which is it's, it's, it's neat to learn that she has. She's getting more, less dragony, I, I would guess. More like a, a more civilized person, pretty much. Which is neat, always neat. She doesn't have her new design though. If you, if you look at the sets, so she has a newer design with newer uh, hairstyle, uh, new... Sure, Pete. <laughs> I am sleepy today. A uh, new hairpiece, all that, and she doesn't have it yet. I, I believe she may have it for part two. Or yes, part two of. Part two of uh, season two. So yeah, then we cut to Lloyd and such. Uh, Lloyd and Nia going out, and they say they oh these uh, gonna have more visions, which is, I mean, I'm with uh. I'm, a, I'm, I'm always worried for my boy Lloyd, but, like, if these visions, as bad as they are, if they can help you with these warnings, you probably should listen to them, dog. Especially if they're so specific as to where they can tell, tell you exactly what you need to know. You know, even if it is kind of, if it is scary, if, if it is, you know, just horrific. But also, we do see, uh, in this, in this vision, we see... Uh, Cloud Kingdom crumbling. We see Wolf Warriors. We see... Uh, I, d I would assume the Cloud, Cloud Kingdom crumbling is... Perhaps a may... Uh, a faulting to do with... Uh, with um, the killing of the Cloud Monks. Which is very... It's disturbing. And we see here... Uh, Euphrasia being held in front of... The portal, I would suppose, where they say later the nether space, which it seems to be where the place where they were banished in. The nether space, honestly, is a very cool name to be 100%. Like the nether, like there's a, oh, this is the nether. No, this is the nether space. Come, Jordana, Cinder, we must release the Forbidden Five from the nether space and conquer all of Ninjago. 
Like, for real, though, that's a cool name. But from the way they pose it here, he hits Euphrasia into the portal. As you can as you can see right here. And when she goes in, it appears that... Hold on. I have a better image than this. Uh, I'm just going to wing it. Okay, yeah, she goes in and... Uh... This guy, this man here, uh, whatever which one this is, comes out. So, like, that kind of adds a lot more room to sacrifice uh, their sacrifice definition, where instead of it just being, oh, this is a, this is a, this is going to be a sacrifice of life, we're going to do it like the ancient Mayans uh, or the, Az the Aztecs. No, it's uh, not going to be that. It's going to be a sense of, uh, from what it seems to be, it's like trading a life. For a life you know so like you push a person in there uh another person slash human <sighs> so like a being is pushed into this portal and another portal or a being is pushed into the portal so that another may come out so by sacrifices and by five of them they mean literally they need five people to bring out the five forbidden five out so that is interesting because like even then we know about their power right we know of their influence we know of their uh teachings their language all that but we literally don't know anything else about them we don't know their names or well actually actually uh now that i think about it they kind of do drop a name later on well i'll cut to it but yeah we don't know anything about them which is like we don't know what their power is essentially we don't know if what species they are we don't we just they seem human like humanoid but we have like a lot of uh we have a lot of creatures and people and beings that resemble humans like humanoids essentially so that is interesting and of course that's enough to send lloyd over the edge like for real I, I, that's that'd be scary like especially having so many visions of so many bad things even if it's like uncontrollable involuntary you just gotta be like so mentally draining and damaging for it to be happening to you like just over and over again for it to be you know going over something like that it's gotta be crazy it's gotta be insane like especially you know when this situation is so dire right for this to be happening over and over again with having no control over it and having no like awareness of what when or where and they happen it's got to be crazy it's got to be insane poor lloyd man he's going through it he used to just be he he used to be just a kid who wanted to, to conquer towns for its candy where did it all go this isn't um, this is not 2012 anymore lloyd you have to get with the times i'm sorry anyways i'm done with my yap sash uh so yeah we learned the buggy is from Jordana. Uh, the buggy that we saw from, or that, that we saw, but we learned was from, uh, learned what's with the sets. We, see, we find out it was actually from Jordana. She has this buggy. Which is neat, because uh, it does explain how she, well, I don't, I don't think she herself built this, but she probably like found it somewhere saying, huh, I could use this buggy. This would definitely drive Sora insane. You know, because she like she's like that. She's she's in it for the dissing of Ninja and Sora, essentially. But yeah, it is crazy how she dehumanizes her. Uh, Jordana dehumanizes uh, Bonzo as much as like the administration was dehumanizing. Uh, you know. Uh, Zane earlier that was crazy and it's even crazier here because you know she was going all through like through her whole whole life wanting to be recognized as just more than a spell as a person only to have Jordana here literally send her back to that it's just that is so rude but uh, Jordana I don't even want to remember your name but I have to for the sake of this video so there so yeah it is neat how they get out of the uh, cutting back to uh, Cold and Zane, it is neat how they get out of this by having Zane insert his wire, I guess, into his into the thing, which is neat. And yeah, apparently they have to, they have to find a way to get out of here because it's like 
well, that door is locked, but also, like, apparently all secret ha hidden passages, ways, or blocked by whatever. And we get this neat view of over over everything. It looks nice. There's a bowl of something over there. And, uh, that's pretty much it. But, yeah. And they go up and down. Apparently one of these drop doors is a mimic. Hold on, I have, a, I have to get a good view of this. Yeah, like, look at this. Or, like, that one thing from underneath the the photo booth of that one Star vs. episode. Which is horrifying, and this is also horrifying. <laughs> and impractical. I don't see a, I don't see any of the mouth on this thing. How is this thing supposed to eat? <laughs> but, yeah, she's a, fa a raging fang mouth. Okay. And she suspects it was Janet. And yeah, there's another secret passage, but it turns out this is a thing where the so the darkness has been made solid here. <laughs> Getting very, it's very interesting how this is like whimsical, like old magic, and the ones that we see of Jordana using is like older or like more sinister, like powerful magic, which is it's a good, it's a good, it's a good. Uh, it's a good balance between the two, you know? Like, one is this old mystical, like, uh-huh, I look at this magic. I'm gonna... This is the kind of magic you see in, like, uh, old, like, like, early cartoons, I think, is a good... Or, like, early video games is what I mean to say. Or, like, you know, stories, books, like, just, you know, kid stuff, essentially. But Jordana's side of, I guess, the Thorax Thoraxian magic is more cursed, more, like dangerous essentially more just like a good and, and the, the fact that she's only barely learning that in comparison to freaking uh gandaloria who's been a high sorceress since freaking uh however many thousands of years ago i think is a good way that they put it because they said it was forbidden and uh the way that they made it sound like it, she was like that for thousands of years, so that would make sense to where she's this old, but like she lost her touch in a way from what it makes it sound like, you know, she doesn't have no idea where her magic stuff is and she doesn't know how to do things, so like it wouldn't make sense as to where she's kind of losing her edge, pretty much. So, I do like that. It does make it, it does show that there is still going to be some struggle despite them meeting a high sorceress so like yeah, that make that's 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 a that's a good thing. That's a good balance, I would say. It's not gonna make everything an instant win. But yeah, I like how they have this uh, little small door. Door gets smaller and smaller until they run into this random lava tight here, just chilling and dancing with a toaster. However, the however the toaster ended up here, is it's crazy. Yeah, I like how she literally just says, I have no idea how we could... Yeah, hair in my mouth. I have no idea how can I can remember where all the magic stuff is in my magic storage. Well, if only you appetized it. Erm, actually, you can only identify if you appetized by Zane. But, yeah. I also really like this cool moment here where we come, when we come back to uh, with the Ryu and Aaron. We have Ryu learning how to fly. Look at him. Look at him paneled by the moon there. That's really good. He's awesome. Ryu's awesome. He's so different now than when he was just a, like a, essentially a baby dragon pet. Now he's literally just like a full member of the team. And a ninja from what they classify him as does that mean he gets somewhere a ninja gi but and also this scene uh we learn a few things here uh with the wildfires uh heel gets back at her which let me get so look it's so revolutionary to her that wow if you have actually let my leg heal or if i let my leg rest it'll heal faster like isn't that crazy like yeah that makes sense and also in this scene they totally commit some Acts of murder by flinging a few of them off. Like literally, there's so many. There's a bit. There's a few scenes right here where. 
They let you just grab and throw them off. Which I mean, do what you can. It's a very serious situation, but like we've never seen a situation like this where they just very having to have to casually throw people off into a void that they callously escaped from the first time around at least. But uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. Even more crazy that, you know, they kind of just don't they talk about it much. But it's it's fine. They're nameless uh, wolf warrior bad guys. They're probably they're probably not human. Maybe hopefully, as soon as they put on a mask and want to enact crimes of extreme murder, from what it sounds like, uh, they're no longer human. So okay, yeah, but there was this one guy straight up who got punched. By Sora. Uh, where's a good friend? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Wait more. Yeah, yeah, bro here was coming in for a uh, sneak attack on Wildfire, but then Sora saw the right through it and then gave her the, gave him the kick of his life. And probably death, most likely. When he gets zooted from far away and straight up launched off the cliff. Which is... I don't, I, not that I could think of any situation where... At least the humans... They went out of their way to kick him off a bridge. Or off a cliff. In a, in a way that makes him probably very certain of dying. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like in this situation, it's, uh... A little bit justified for them to be taking such extreme measures. But yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, they're dead now, so we don't have to think about it anymore. You know? It's just a classic, uh, it's a classic, uh, cartoon from the 2000s, uh, on Cartoon Network. Yeah. So, yeah, we come back to, uh, Bonzo here. He's, uh, caught up in this. And I wish he came with this set. It would have made me immediately want it much more, to be honest. If they had Bonzel as an exclusive figure to that set, like, ugh, I would want that set so bad, to be honest. If they traded, I think Cole was a part of that set too. So like, don't re okay, don't remove Cole, don't remove Aaron. Uh, I think Cinder is a part of that set. Uh, how about remove him? But I guess there's no conflict. Okay, how about? Okay, remove Cinder. Put Bonzel. And make the enemy a uh, wolf warrior. That'd be a good balance, I think. I think it's a good balance. Uh, it would make sense to make it actually a little bit more accurate to how it is in the show. Which they they don't do. I don't think it's their fault. I don't think they mean to make it not connect as much as it does within the show to the sets. But like, they have a lot of opportunities, I think. Especially recently. With, you know. Uh, however, it may be done. Now, because set, between set accuracy before and now, it's getting a lot different as to where we literally see features of sets be used in the show. And it works really well, I think. So, like, we're getting closer and closer to what I would assume is peak set accuracy. And peak set accuracy can only be achieved when uh, everyone is locked in. And by that, I mean, we get all the minifigures of all the sets, of all the shows, of all the series has shown us. And we can start by getting a minifigure of, uh, of freaking... I can't, I can't think of a good person to think about. Or whatever, there's too many people for me to list. Anyways, uh, we see, uh, Aaron catching up on, uh, I forget her name. <laughs> like, everybody both enter the car. <laughs> it gives you straight back, uh, <laughs> flashbacks of that one scene in, uh, Seabound where Kai ri rides in the car with, uh, Calamar. And this is also a good scene. 
Where they both try to fight to get the to get control of the car. And she she almost has the upper hand here where she has her magic stuff out. But it seems like, you know... Plus, she has her seatbelt on, so... <laughs> it seems that they put that detail in there, so you know she's serious. She's probably gonna win, because she has her seatbelt. That's... That's neat. That's a cool detail. But then she unbuckles it so she can get a good shot in at Aaron. What, do you, what she almost does, to be honest here. She has the upper hand right here. She can just go blue and then fire Aaron. But nope. Uh, wildfire. Er, yeah. <laughs> Ryu just picks her up and tosses her. This is a good frame. <laughs> can we see her there in the top corner? Epic. Very epic. She just kind of yoinks and then drops her. And then she falls hard landing on the... The rock, like, yikes. But, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, like, she's like, ah, they got away. But she's literally like, oh, why can't they remember my name? Great, great, very great. But, yeah. And then there's this neat talk between, uh, Bonzel and Aaron, which they've never met before this, as far as I know, and they make aware of it, saying, huh, I don't know who you are. And I like how when they go out and try to pass a cliff, uh, Aaron uses the grappler from, well, at first he speeds up, but then he uses the grappling hook from the sets. And it immediately works as a function, which, based function, to be honest, a grappling hook set, a grappling hook, a grappling hook, uh, a car, a buggy car with the grappling hook. Would you have thought of that? Probably not, if not for Aaron here, whose his elemental power is grappling hook, and it's it's just here, and it's neat that it works. Anyways. And seriously, why can't we? I could literally see a crate function on that. You can open it and put Bonzel inside and close the crate. That would have worked so well with the set, but no one believes me. No one believes me. You believe me. You believe me. Hopefully you believe. But yeah, they they, tr they notice uh, uh, Kai, Sora, and Wildfire notice other people walk in. So they go and they dress up in Wolf Warrior suits while still holding the mask. So that's like, I can't be the only reason like a little worried if, say, while they have those on, uh, they press the gong and then they all get possessed by the, the all the goodness leaves. Whichever that may be. The goodness of their souls, pretty much. Or that hold them back. Which, I mean, they probably do hold back a little bit. To be honest. Like, I don't think they're all to incinerate everybody in every given moment. But, you know, it's a little, uh, it's a little, um, it's a little, uh, reassuring. And a little worrying. But yeah, then there's this funny moment. <laughs> the magic antics, which is neat. And there's this interesting teapot here, now that I see it. Uh, what was it said? This is going to be... And they both look at it, too, like, if you can see here. They notice the teapot, and they both look at it, so... It could be just be all they're looking at stuff as it gets flung around the room, but they do both look at it, so, like... Do you think a part of them recognizes it, in a way? So, like, that's interesting. But also, there's this <laughs> gross little flubber thing that gets on Cole's face and steals his voice. Which is a very funny scene. Then, to give it back, he has to put the thing back on his face. So, that's, that's neat. Little funny little magic antics. Then, there's this thing that makes Zane grow to giant height. Which, I mean, as undesirable as this outcome may be, I feel like in a certain situation, uh, a giant Zane would benefit everyone greatly. Especially when fighting the bad guys. Plus, like, you know, he seems to be, given the square cube law, he's got to be, like, immediately unbeatable at that point. Imagine how much ice he could produce if he is giant. He could make us a blizzard on his own. He could do it. He could pull an Elsa, freeze everybody, freeze a whole country into a winter, or like uh, Shimo from 
GVK where, or GXK where she could create a whole a, a new Ice Age. But then there's Mini Zane. Cute. He's minifigure size. I should realize it. Hold on. There's gotta be... I gotta find a specific frame. Uh, here. Look at this. He's literally minifigure size. He's making minifigure size to what Lloyd is. Or what Cole is. He's literally the size of a Lego minifigure. That's so cool. <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's a size that I have I am in my hand right now that I'm holding my Lego sick pig. That's so cool. That's so neat. <laughs> That's so cool. So, uh, yeah. They all get out. They... Again, we have Giant Zane here, which I feel like if he wanted to, he could, he could take on... He can take on Roz himself, maybe. In this size. But yeah, they make it there, and it makes sense as to where these all these other people probably have their good their goodness take that. So it's not it's it makes sense to probably not notice. They probably they're probably all paying attention in the front. That's why they chose a way back, which is smart, smart of them. But uh, yeah. So yeah, Xanir says uh, the the appears to be uh, losing altitude. So like. Does that mean they all probably died? Maybe, probably not. Who knows? It was off screen. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. So yeah, they all tornado up, but she takes her hat off and then she puts her thing and says, Sorry, Hattie. Or it's been a while, Hattie. That's her name of her hat. I assume and they are leaves. They've actually if you look at that, that's really neat. That's really cool. And they have bands on them too. That's good detail. And she uses her hat to fly up, which is it looks funny, but also base, like very cool. Like we, she be she be she do be using her hat to fly upward, which not gonna like gives like Silver Surfer vibes. And it makes and I mean as cool as a broomstick is, it, that's also pretty cool. Oh, I wonder what a talisman would be. It would totally be something weird like a slug. But yeah, then we go to uh, the ritual with the. Poison the or position poison <laughs> position the captives, which yeah it makes sense as to where from what it seems to be uh it's like a it's like a situation where okay uh they need to put five people in there and who better to use than these five monks to throw them all in there and apparently kill the rest of them, which is crazy to think about. But I mean, if you told me Cinder was a murderer, I would totally believe you. And then, as soon as he starts the drums here, we have this interesting moment where... Also, uh, shout out to these drums for having the blood moon on them. That's interesting detail. They wanted to get it right. But yeah, as soon as he starts the drum beats, apparently... This guy said, may, named Noct... Noct? Is it Noct? If it's Noct, that's a cool name. But then he literally just says, finally. It's been centuries. We are being called home. And from this, the way this place looks, looks so cool. It's it, it fits the name Nether Space. So is the Nether Space an alternate dimension? Is it like, is it like a timeline to them where there's two different timelines essentially, kind of in a way, where, uh, yeah. So, there's a few times here, right, in Ninjago, where there's been separate timelines created by uh, rifts in time. You know what I mean? So, like, okay, here's the, here's the deal, here's the deal. Uh, there are, as far as I can think of, there's been only uh, one where, all the way back in Season 2, when Garmadon goes in the past of the pilots, then there's been another one where... When was the one after that? Um, I'm trying to think. It might... It might have been Skybound, where the entirely the entirety of that season was an alternate timeline, so that's another one. Second timeline. And the third is in Hands of Time, when they go in the past of the Serpentine Wars, 
or the right after, I would assume, and that creates a third timeline. So between that and between the three timelines, there's been they're like different ways that have been altered, but they don't connect to this timeline because they're in a different plane of reality, and they just don't exist in this one. So like between that and the realms, which is just different places entirely, it's not alternate dimensions; it's alternate realms. So like. It's different realms of a bigger existence, pretty much. It's not dimensions, or it kind of is dimensions. They they don't word it right away. They just say realms. Well, I think I I don't think they word it as dimensions. I'm not sure, but it's not like the multiverse where there's a multiversal ninja. You know, it's not like there's not like there's gonna be a Lloyd in the alternate universe of the underworld. There's not like be there's not gonna be a Zane in the Nether realm. It's all in one bigger, I don't want to say universe, because technically they had their own universes, but they never really explored that. It's not like we saw the space of uh, the, the underworld. It's not like we saw the surface of the underworld. It's not like we saw the surface world of Cloud Kingdom. It's not like we saw the entirety of the Never Realm. It's not like we saw the outside of uh the outside of um ba, 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 the cursed realm it's not like we saw the surface again of uh what was that what was the name Jin Jago. <laughs> so yeah like it's different so like from what it seems to be here this seems to be just like a whole different realm entirely like another dimension and that's probably the way though they worded it it's a different dimension so like yeah I'm go ranting too long now. I probably just might as well. I don't have time to wrap it up, though. There's still a lot to talk about. <laughs> and like, uh, you ask me, is she super unreliable, Lord Roz? Which is great. Both these two just bickering. And yeah, L Roz gets super mad. And then he literally just takes matter into his own hands, which I, I love you, Roz, but I feel like you, you probably should do that more often because... From what it seems, like you, 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 when you, if you get stuff done, you get it really get done, and we then we see it right away. When I was speaking, well, first he laced your den out pretty much by giving her a shove. Well, he picks her up and then throws her in the ground, which is crazy. I feel like she would have broken all bones in her body if. Well, I mean, she's already a, a pretty much a sorceress on her own, so if like. If he did that with anyone else, they would have broken all their bones in their body. But yeah. I don't know if this is because of the Blood Moon that makes Roz more powerful. Because it's shown that there's a difference now with the red in his color. So like, is he stronger now? Is he faster now? What does this mean for him? So like, yeah. Then he jumps away and then jumps. And I like this moment where... Cinder calls her out saying, Oh, I'm not the teacher's pet anymore. <laughs> Which is funny. It shows he has personality also. And yeah. Then this whole, that like, almost last scene is literally just Cinder running up and following and running towards the, the buggy. Which is insane to see him able to run and jump like that. And as much as it probably would have been... I don't know. It is smart, sort of, that Aaron didn't floor it straight into him. He tried to turn away, but Ross kind of saw right through it. It decides to hit the car anyways with his hammer. And he looks so cool while doing it. Look at him holding his hammer up. Who is he showing off to? Look at this, bro. Look at this man, this monster, this dragon tiger guy. Oh, I don't know why he keeps saying dragon. But yeah, Ryu here. Poor Ryu, man. You got shot the first time. You How are you supposed to know? And uh, he just lays him out with one swing of his hammer, bro. Ryu, you should have just taken Aaron and run. <sighs> poor Ryu. And poor Aaron here. In one second, he gets demolished. Like, and even bring it back to, hey, this happened the exact same way as the first time. Just by grabbing his foot and hitting him. Which does seem to be like a 
like, like a repeat thing and also oh this frame here is so good so good so good it it looks like just two lego hands holding each other but the way it's framed and sound effects and the details of it it's just so so good so awesome shows the difference in power between them for real and poor bonzo you're having to watch without it not really be unable to do anything poor bonzo and yeah, I love this last scene here where he tells him off, tells it just enforces everything Aaron has been feeling this past season that he's unable to do anything because of his inability to get better at spijitsu and spijitsu throw and in pretty much anything else that he hasn't gotten better. He, he still hasn't been able to beat Roz since last time, which it makes 100% sense. The only reason they got over on Roz that one time was because of... Uh, both Sora was there, and they were just using uh, the elements of Ryu to uh, pretty much just deter and detain him. And this is different. This is a whole different situation. This is why Roz is winning here, because he doesn't have that upper hand anymore, because he doesn't have anything anymore. And he says he used to be like him once we killed him. It's crazy. He says if the ninja hold him back, he could have been something special, which is crazy. Like, this is just insane writing. Insane delivery and insane writing. Insane delivery and great writing. Great writing, I'm trying to say. But yeah, he was weak like him. So he cut back to him. Holding his ball in the cave. <coughs> but yeah. Taught him the most important thing in the world, strength. Then he goes and delivers a probably fatal hit on him by making him land on the ground like that. Like, bro, it's crazy. And then he just says it right here. One day, he'll find a true master who can teach you the same. So, like, there's got to be so many implications from that. Does that mean... Does that... He wants his master to cheat, teach Aaron the same thing? Does he want... Does he want to be... Aaron's master, because he didn't just kill him right here. Not that he probably maybe could have wanted to, but, like, yeah, that is that is so interesting, because, like, in the future, we might even see this going on. We might see Aaron continue to go down this path of wanting to be better, but having to rely on strength to do it. So, you know, like, who knows what this means. And then we see, apparently, his parents come. And that's what he's seeing. But, like, this could easily just be Aaron and... Or, oh, this would be sweet. It would be Nia and Lloyd. Coming after this to go to him to see what's going on. But, yeah, the pieces are all in place, Master. The true power of all the realms will be theirs. And that's the episode ends. Oh, I need to know what happens next. I want to know so bad. But I'm sure you all know by now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think that we yapped on for too long. I'm very interested to see where they go from here. Uh, once again, this has been Lego Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2, Part 1, Episode 9. We're almost there. We're almost at the finale. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Anyways, uh... Please, let me know what you all thought of this episode in the comments below. Do you like where they're going here? Do you like me talking about them for an hour? Do you like all this? Do you like my yapping sessions? Please let me know. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. That would be really help me out. And uh, thank you for watching. My name is Andy. This has been LEGO Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2. Uh, whatever the title name was. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.